Hello, so today I'm going to show you something I've been working on in Dodo and for the Godot community. Uh, so I, I've been doing a lot of research in game mechanics and trying to implement as many as I can. And this is one that I've um, had a lot of fun with over the years in the game that it comes from. And this is the Garish mod and Half-Life 2 Beta uh, physics gun. So it's really interesting because it looks like a very simple thing like it looks like grabbing an object and putting it into another location and that's how you can imagine it but there's a lot more to it uh, so for example let me explain that if I grab this I cannot put it under the ground because I'm using forces instead of just setting the position now if you did just set the position uh, using the integrate forces override in rigid body in Godot uh, you could go through things and that's not very nice is it uh, now, I am not a mathematician, so a mathematician, mathematician, so there are a lot of things that I don't um, even understand because uh, some of this code comes from a Unity project that uh, implements uh, physics can too. Uh, well, it comes from there, like the concept, but I had to obviously adapt it to the Godot API, which is different than Unity, as you may be aware, uh, except for that one Unity compatibility project that there is, but the important part is this is a working physics gun and it, it, it rotates things and it even rotates them into in this axis so you know it looks simple but there's more to it so for example when i move the object it always keeps facing f facing the direction it was facing when i grabbed it in re relation to me and uh, that, that's something the garage mode one had then you can pull push things so obviously the where's the hard part of this the hard part is uh you have a target which is this position and, and well i the two parts I found the hardest, conceptually, were to uh, calculate the, the the rotation change so that it continued to face me, and the other complex part that I found was uh, figuring out how to integrate all these forces without um, having to either modify the rigid body and add um, override for all rigid bodies, and while keeping obviously uh, using the physics functions, so using linear and angular velocity to let the physics take care of the, mo of the motion itself so it doesn't go through things. Uh, originally I used a custom force integrator, uh, especially for the rotation part, mainly for the rotation part actually, but I figured out how to calculate things correctly now and now it works that way. So, uh, there's also this beautiful uh, line that comes from my gun and that comes from a, an asset called a line renderer and this is actually our implementation of, of Unity's line renderer and it's very similar to the one that the source engine has uh, it does the exact same thing as the one in source um, so now that you have an idea of what this does and you know the fact that yes it does work um, I'm going to show you how I made it so let's go to the code uh, the code, of course, is going to be available on GitHub, so if anyone wants to take a look at it. Uh, there's a lot of cleanup I'm going to have to do, so stuff like sensitivities, there are some sensitivities that aren't, uh, like for example, this is the the this is the this speed at which the, the object rotates to the position it should be in, uh, and that I want to make it adjustable, really. I think it's reasonable to make it adjustable, because there are some games where it might be beneficial to make it slow, so it gives a different feeling, of course. Feeling is a very important part of uh, making a good game mechanics that involves any kind of movement. Uh, so let me explain a bit what I have here. So this is the object we are moving, which is a rigid body, of course. Uh, this is the local hit diff, so this is... I imagine... Uh, what can I use for this? Uh, imagine I have this controller, and I grab it from this point, and then I move it. So, so I'm grabbing it from here, right? I'm not grabbing it from the center. So we have to store the difference between this and this this difference here we have to store it and why do we have to store it because when we move it around we want it to move around this point and not around the center so we want basically we want to keep this offset this offset here we want to keep it and local hit diff stores that uh, there's also rotation diff which is when I grab the object and it's looking at me I want to know what's the difference between my rotation and their rotation so when I move it around we keep the same rotation difference. That way the object will continue to face me, regardless of what kind of translation I do to it. And then we have the distance, which uh, is how far the object is from me. Now, uh, as you may have figured out, the distance uh, is calculated when we are firing it, and 
then it's just to um, to figure out where the holding point should be, the, the point that we were talking about. The holding point basically is the position plus the rotation difference uh, rotated around the, the you know, the, the, the arc that there's around the other thing. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain it because I'm not a mathematician, sorry. Uh, uh, rotation tolerance, uh, basically this is how much rotation input you need before it starts to move. So, of course, we're using the absolute value of the uh, relative movement of the mouse. Then there's the arc resolution, which is uh, how many points we have in the in the, uh, in the the ray itself. So by having more, what you have is a more smooth ray because it has more points at the cost of, of course, performance. Then we have a line renderer, uh, rotation sensitivity, which is... Um, this is how much the rotation moves uh, in relation to the input we are receiving. And then we have the maximum grab range and the minimum grab range. So basically the idea is that I if I grab this object from here, it's not going to get closer than 1.5 units, which is 1.5 meters, uh, because Godot uses uh, standard units. Um, and of course the maximum grab range has two uses, which is how far it can go with when I move it with the... Uh, with the functionality that allows it to go closer or farther away from me but also how much range the gun has this of course can be changed easily so you can have an infinite range gun it is possible and we have the scroll wheel input and why is this here you may ask because uh, of course the scroll wheel input is uh, in input and we do all the physics integration in physics process so it has to be there uh, it gets set to zero at the end of uh, the uh, physics process function then we have the rotation input which is um, when we hold R, how much um, mouse movement we've given it. Um, and that's of course there for the same exact reason. Then there's the UV animation rate, which is used for uh, the, the laser itself. So it has like this motion, like the, the, the texture moving because it's a looping texture, so it looks really nice. Um, so here we have the input, of course, as I explained, this is just taking all the information and um, storing it so that the physics pr uh, process can use it. Now, uh, then we have the fire event, and the fire event is a bit special. Uh, this is the code that is used to actually grab the object, to initially grab the object, and not just to grab it, but to keep grabbing it. Um, so, how exactly does this work? It's very simple. Uh, when when we are actually, I, I just realized this is a this shouldn't be like this. Hold on. Oh wait, no, no, no. Never mind. I'm an idiot. I I was I I thought there was something wrong, but no, it is actually it is fine. It is fine. Um. So here we are doing our thing where we just uh, figure out where our so we, we, we do a ray from the middle of the camera. Now, you can do it from the camera or from the player itself. Uh, both approaches have their advantages and their disadvantages. Uh, you can also uh, fire the ray from the player to a position calculated from the camera normal. Uh, if, if you're having a third-person character and you allow the player to adjust the camera distance, um, if you fire it from the camera, then what you will have is uh, is a uh, you know you will allow the player to basically get an advantage if they move the camera closer. Now this doesn't matter for my game because I think that it's bad design if just having the camera closer breaks your levels because that's what really matters. Uh, but for multiplayer games you might consider it to be uh, an unreasonable advantage. And you could there are ways you can cap this. For example by checking if the object you've grabbed is actually further away than, than the maximum grab distance that you allow from the player itself. It's one way to do it. I personally don't do it this way. I do it from the camera, because in my game I think it's what really matters. So, different styles for different folks. Um, <laughs> so, uh, here is our uh, release movement. What this basically does is that 
whenever we are um, releasing the thing, we will just nullify it and hide the line renderer. So the line renderer uh, don't doesn't draw anymore. Uh, I think that's very important. <laughs> So here, uh, now here comes the black magic part that I don't completely understand, and I, I think it's fine because I'm not a mathematician. Uh, I don't get an idea of what this is all doing, but I wouldn't be able to make it up myself. Maybe a bit now that I've uh, learned it, but I wouldn't have been able to come up with this without reading code. So that's very important too to read code from other people because you are not uh, you are not Jesus. You cannot make you know, very good code from yourself, like, you know, you cannot solve any problem by yourself because you are not Jesus and you don't know anything, you don't know everything, and I, I don't think that guy did either if he didn't even exist, but, uh, so, here what we're calculating is the, the new difference between, like, the, the camera, the rotation from the object, when we are moved, relative to the, to the new movement and to the old rotation. So we're calculating how much we have to rotate to get it to be facing us again, essentially. Then we have the desired rotation, which is uh, using rotation input, integrating rotation input, and then rotating also the relative to camera rotation. So it's it creates, uh, so if, if this is facing me and I move like this, now it's still facing me, but I also want to add rotation, so we are multiplying it again, so we add a bit more of rotation. That would be an example. Um, then I'm calculating the difference, because w what we have calculated here is the global rotation of the, of the, the object should have. But here we want to calculate is uh, what the rotation that it should have is. And you can clearly see this because when, when we integrate it uh, here, we are actually using rot diff, and rot diff is no more than the desired rotation. Is it? I think it is. No, I think it is. I'm not entirely sure what the fuck this is. Like, I, I actually kind of forgot. Oh no, I didn't forget. This is a different relation to the camera. But, okay, sorry guys, <laughs> I just had a bit of a mental hiccup. Uh, the side rotation here is our target global rotation. Like the global rotation that the object should have. That our object should have. And PMO rotation diff is the relative, the difference between our rotation of the camera and the rotation of the thing, so that we can then calculate how much we have to rotate on the next frame to make it face us again. Um, that's what it is, because what we're doing here is rotating the thing. It's like we're representing the difference by using the inverse of the camera transform, of the basis of the camera transform multiplied by the desired rotation, and that will give us what the difference between the both uh, quaternions is. Apparently, I'm not a mathematician again, I'm not very good at this, sorry. Uh, but here what we are doing is calculating how much force we need to get the holding point, the point that we talked about before, so if I grab it from here, this point right here that I'm grabbing it from, how much do I need to, how much force do I need to apply to move it here? What do I need to change so that this point is still relative to the other one? This distance is, uh, remains the same. So we calculate this, and then we also integrate the fact that w you have you can use a scroll wheel to make it closer or go further. We also do that. I think that's all about this one. Let me check. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. And then we have one last thing, which is um, calculating the difference, like h how much uh, angular velocity we need, and the way we calculate this is by grabbing the rotation difference and then what we do is okay you know by calculating the difference between the rotation we want and the rotation we have now as you can see we do that here and the rest of the code there isn't much more to it um 
here we calculate uh, the distance between our our camera and our object again, and here we calculate the laser points, and here we do the UV offset, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, all, the, all there is to the code, really. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. Uh, you have the code in the description, and I hope you all guys have a nice day.